Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, I finally get my hands on a CKF Evo, not mine. The Wii Synergy has a new blade shape, the best looking one if you ask me, and summer weight folding knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back. My favorite comment from last week was from JN, and he commented on my Black Mamba version 2 video, and he said, I've been asking since my very first frame lock, why no texturing, patterning, or milling on the lock side? Glad to see other makers are coming around. And I thought that was pretty interesting because we've been seeing we've been seeing all sorts of milling on uh, our favorite kind of knives for a long time, and uh, some sort of primary pattern on the front side, and then just a flat titanium lock side. And I never quite understood that either. Uh, I had the old zero tolerance zero uh, five six two CF. Or no, no, it was just the 0562, and uh, that was a hinderer design, the first one that ZT ever did, and they put texturing on both sides. They milled it out on both sides. Now, why they stopped doing that, why other companies stopped doing that, I don't know, uh, but I'm with JN. I'm glad to see uh, companies are starting to come around, like Off Grid Knives, who does their golf ball dimpling on that very knife, the Black Mamba 2, on both sides, and uh, to great effect if you ask me. Uh, okay, so let's do a pocket check. Let's find out what I was carrying today. I know that's the burning question. Uh, what, exactly, what exactly I had in my pocket here. Um, so today I had uh, an interesting carry. It's not anything new. You'll recognize it. I've been carrying this a lot. Uh, but this is the Mekong Delta Combat Folder from Resco Instruments. Uh, they're their knife wing, I think, is called Gooseworks. Uh, Gooseworks, Gooseworks Knife Company, or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of a mysterious outfit. I've gone into depth about uh, trying to find out about this knife, and I did find out it's made by Best Tech, and that must be why I love it so much, man. It really does. Well, once I found out that it wasn't made in the United States, I was at least relieved to find out it was made by Best Tech, one of my favorite, probably my favorite OEM all around. That's not to say I don't respect Riot and think their stuff is outstanding, uh, but I just think uh, Best Tech, man, they knock it out of the park in so many different uh, strata of the knife world. They can make a cheap knife awesome, and they can make a very expensive knife uh, and complex design really, really well. So uh, Mekong Delta Combat Folder, it's been getting tons of carry. Uh, I predicted pro uh, correctly a couple of weeks back on uh, the supplemental when I said I haven't had it long enough to really tell if it was a legit grab and go knife, but indeed it is. I do grab and go with that thing all the time. I do love it. Uh, OK, next up is um, my Fred Perrin uh, clip point neck knife. I was carrying this today and it is so light. It's starting to get warm here. In Virginia, though, this past uh, the past couple of days, it's been nice. Uh, but this is a great light carry. I mean, this this is actually uh, if I were doing summer weight fixed blade knives, this would definitely be in it. Uh, this is a mid tech. Uh, the knife, the blade itself is made by uh, uh, Max Knives and. Um, Mr. Fred Perrin takes it and does his final touches on. I think he puts the G10 on and uh, does does some of the some of the final sharpening and stuff. I, I'm not exactly sure what he does, but uh, <laughs> I, I know he designed it, and I know that this is one of his mid techs, which means his hands were on it somehow. Uh, except, I mean, besides when he sold it to me, uh, this thing is wickedly sharp, very thin. It's got a great profile feels great in the hand and and has illustrated to me why he doesn't do a perfectly half rounded sharpening notch if you notice and not sharpening notch thumb choil finger choil geez you know what i mean <laughs> finger choil so that acts not only as the guard so that you're not slipping up on, slipping up onto the blade in a thrust uh, but also back here this flat portion is where your finger is naturally going to rest 
and that tilts or angles the blade uh, for and puts it at an optimal angle for slashing and accelerating a slashing cut. And I have no doubt that that was uh, that's something I only realized on this knife, though. I, I carry the street Bowie a lot. Love that knife. And it has this uh, similar shape uh, finger cut out. Uh, but only on this knife did it really occur to me um, the the utility of that. And I don't know if it's intentional, but um, it works great. <laughs> so I had that on me. And then lastly, a knife that I've had on me since I got it, the Jack Wolf Knives uh, Little Bro. Now, unfortunately, I'm sure you've heard the news about the Little Bro. The Little Bro, um, besides those of us who already have it, the Little Bro is being return to the manufacturer for tweakage slash remakeage <laughs> because this version um, had blade wrap, has blade wrap, uh, which means that if you look down in there, you can see a couple of spots where the, <clears throat> we're looking down into the well of the knife and you can see a couple of raised spots there. That's where pins go perpendicular to the scales um, into the liners to hold that back spring in. Well, that's a raised space. And when this comes slamming down, because it's got such great action, uh, the blade itself was making contact with that elevated surface. It happened on mine. At first, I thought maybe it was because I was actually using it and not storing it like a museum piece. And I thought maybe I had gone through, I've only used it on cardboard, really. And I thought maybe I went through cardboard that was a little rough, but then I looked at where the little tiny uh, glinting was on my blade edge, and indeed it was uh, right above where it would make contact with that elevated surface that accommodates the pin. So this this was one of the knives. They didn't all have blade wrap, and uh, Ben came on, made a, a video, an Instagram video, and uh, also sent out a letter to those of us who have these knives just to let people know about the situation, uh, that he is rectifying it, and that he's pained because he loves this knife so much. And, uh, you know, it, it is what happens. You know, he, he tested each one, open and shut each one, but, you know, that doesn't mean that it's going to immediately uh, have blade wrap. I've had blade wrap on a bunch of knives. This one uh, just takes, this will take one, um, one solid sharpening and it'll get rid of it. Let's see, you might be able to see the little, yeah, there's a little ding right in the edge, right near my thumb. Uh, but that, that is, uh, now it makes it even feel more special. It's like, ah, oh, I took this knife in even with its blade wrap. What a good guy I am. So that's what I carried today. What did you carry today? Let me know in the comments below or call the listener line 724-466-4487 and leave us a message and let us know, uh, what it is you carry. Uh, it helps me. I, well, first of all, it's like, uh, I'll be totally honest. It's a little bit of vicarious, uh, enjoyment I get out of uh, hearing what you classy gentlemen and ladies carry uh, on the regular, but also sometimes it gives me ideas uh, about what I might want and get. Uh, okay, so speaking of wanting and getting, uh, this past weekend uh, was Father's Day, and my ladies uh, had, a well, my wife, and of course the girls came along, but my wife had a really cool plan. She is the type who, she is a planner, and uh, so that always puts the pressure on me around her birthday and mother's day is like, God, I got to plan something. Cause anyway, she planned something cool. We went out in the country uh, and went to an old fashioned air show. It was so cool where, where um, there's a bunch of uh, biplanes and those are uh, those were models that were used as trainers for uh, world war two for guys who were, who were learning how to fly during world war two. They started in these biplanes and after the show, you know, my wife bought me a, uh, a ride up in a biplane and it was the coolest thing. I was in the front seat and you know, I had the had the headsets on and the whole thing and and just got a chance to look at Virginia from 2000 feet. And it was beautiful. It was so cool. Uh, and he did some light maneuvering. That was pretty awesome. But uh, when we went, this is the kind of nerd you're listening to right now. Uh, before we went, I was like, what kind of knife do you bring to an old school air show? And I was like, it's got, I think it's got to have micarta on it because I know old school airplanes, sometimes the propellers were made of micarta, sometimes the, and the bodies themselves are micarta like in that they are cloth stretched over some sort of armature and then doused and impregnated with some sort of material epoxy thing. But you can tell 
So anyway, I went with something uh, micarta, and I, I I went with the preta too. I went with the micarta preta too, and I thought that the shape of the handle and those three lines were kind of dashing, uh, like the design from the 30s and 40s. And uh, something about this knife, I was like, uh, this is the one. So I brought this with me, and this went up in the in the biplane with me. And and I like that I didn't bring the titanium version because it's heavier, and you know. Um, ounces make pounds and pounds make pain, even when you're in an airplane or especially when you're in an airplane. Um, I actually saw one guy say, uh, I, I can't take you up right now, sir, because I just filled up with gas and you're a you're a man of ample carriage, you know, so I'm going to have to wait till I get rid of some of this gas and then we'll be able to get off the ground. So, yeah, every ounce counts. So it was the responsible thing. It was the right thing. And it was the uh, aesthetically um, what's the word um, consistent thing to bring this knife almost looks like an airplane or a shark or a race car or lots of other things but uh this is the knife i took flying let's fly away you know you know the frank sinatra song you can go listen to it yourself all right everybody uh coming up here on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at a couple of new knives on the market we have one sweet loner in the state of the collection that just has had me gobsmacked and uh the, since i've had it and then we are going to take a look at some of the summer weight knives in my collection. And of course, we know that that's knife junkie style. I do like the heavier knives. So I hope these pass your muster. Um, but uh, before we get to any of that, if you think what we do here is valuable, check us out on Patreon. You can get interview extras. That's my favorite off the record stuff from the people we interview here. And also you get entered into a knife giveaway and there's other stuff too. Uh, quickest thing you can do is uh, either scan this QR code or just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So uh, two years ago, we came out with the Synergy. And the Synergy, if you're an old guy like me, you've been around long enough, is a knife that came out in 1999. I remember it being advertised on the backs of Tactical Knife Magazine and, and the whatever the knife magazines I was gawking over uh, back in that day. And there were these very colorful and customizable knives uh, designed by a guy, Jim O'Young. And he had them produced uh, in integral aluminum handles, button locks, and just a, a, a really unique shaped uh, frame and handle. Well, uh, We Knife resurrected that design, uh, which I thought was a great idea, in an upswept uh, kind of Persian blade or in a sort of upswept uh, Tonto blade. A beautiful knife. Had a chance to check that out at Blade Show. Uh, and now they have a new blade shape, which to me is by far the best looking. Uh, and of course, we know that's what's important. Uh, but also, I have a feeling it's probably the most useful. Uh, we all love a Tonto blade. At least I love a Tonto blade. And there, are, there is a lot of utility to be found in that. But those of us who don't like the Tonto blade really don't like it. And then there's that upswept kind of Persian version they had, also a fetching design. Uh, but if you don't like the tip orientation you don't like the tip orientation this drop point that they have coming out though is uh looks like it solves all the problems it takes that point puts it center line ah look at that and it's a gorgeous wedge i can't tell if it's hollow ground it doesn't mention in the um article here but uh man i hope it is because uh we know that civivi uh the the we budget brand uh, does incredible hollow grinds. So this this looks like a knife deserving of it. You can see some nice um, micro milling around the periphery of that handle. Uh, that looks kind of like pinstriping until it uh, turns into those concentric circles going around that very classy pivot. I love branded pivots. That's my thing now. Branded pivot and don't write on the blade, damn it. And then that really cool looking uh, inlay there they have with carbon fiber. This thing looks beautiful. That's 20 CV steel. And they're calling this the Synergy 2V2 because it's the Synergy 2. And this is the second version of it. I think uh, for my money, that is the that is the Synergy I would get my hands on uh, if I were to go for it. So there you have it. Something brand new, but also brand old from Wee Knives. Okay, uh, next up, I just wanted to mention this and show this off because I love my version of it. Uh, 
Jason Knight, you know Jason Knight. He's a world-class, well-known uh, master bladesmith. Uh, he was a guest judge on Forged in Fire for a while and um, has this signature style um, of kukri, kind of kukri meets Bowie almost that he makes. Um, and he teamed up with Doug Markaida and Fox Knives uh, four or five years ago to create this folder called the MK Ultra. Um, and then, uh, and at that time, it was only an exclusive through a company called T Tactical Essentials or something. What are they called? Now I can't remember what they're called. Uh, but uh, that went quickly, and then they re-released it, and that's when I got my hands on it. And now this is the second full, I mean, it, it's been, it's come out and gone away and come out and gone away. And now it's coming out in an exclusive with Knives, sh knives ship free. So if you love this design, which I do, and I can highly recommend it, I would say jump all over it because they made a couple of changes uh, to this version that I would have loved to have seen on my version, uh, namely, and most importantly, access to the lock bar. I, I can on mine really only end up uh, unlocking it by sticking my forefinger in there. And you know how you know that that setup. Um, it can be done and it's fine, but I just, you know, I, I want to be able to do it with my thumb too. And it's always been a hassle, a uh, beautiful four inch blade, but they've made it so that it comes out, uh, and, and that it folds much easier. Now, uh, the blade steel is still in 690 CO, which is fine. Uh, I mean, mine is razor sharp and just awesome. And I use it for very little. So yeah, it's probably a fine blade steel, but you know, there's that thing where when you're paying, uh, handsome bucks. Um, you you kind of want to feel like not only you're paying for the design, uh, but you also want to know that you're paying for the materials. Design and build is great, and the name Jason Knight. I love putting uh, whatever kind of money I can put in Jason's Knight Knight's pocket. Unfortunately, I cannot afford his customs. Um, but at the same at the same time, you know, uh, it feels like maybe the blade steel should have been upped a little bit, just a little bit. Especially if it's an exclusive for Knives Ship Free. Why not make it like Super Cherry? Uh, okay, so that's it for uh, Knife Life News. Always keeping my eye on Knife News, a great, great resource. You got to check it out. Uh, ben Schwartz, the, the head writer and uh, editor over there, is a fantastic writer. And he comes up with new ways to make titanium frame lock folders sound new and exciting every time. He's a good writer. So check it out. All right. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at this outstanding, incredible, cool knife uh, loaned to me by Lefty EDC, the, the extremely generous Kevin. I, I appreciate it, Kev, um, as so much that, uh, man, this knife. Uh, anyway, so we're going to take a look at that. And then summer weight folders. Uh, what are the best uh, lightweight folders in my collection? And uh, how can we extrapolate from there? All of this and much, much more. Well, not too much more, actually, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I had forgotten about this <clears throat> late night. At least it was late night for me. I am not immediately on my DMs. Some of you might might know this about me. Um, I have resented the short leash of the cell phone for years and years, and only in the past uh, couple have I become more and more attentive. Uh, but sometimes I don't jump on uh, on my DMs. This was a late night DM for me, and I forgot all about it until this arrived um, two days ago. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> wow. So uh, this is the Custom Knife Factory Evo by Rotten Designs, designed by Rotten Designs and made by um, custom knife factory, uh, out of Russia. And I, let's just start with, I think it is a spectacularly beautiful and cool looking knife. Now that's the looks. Um, I have not used this yet. Uh, Kev has, um, basically made it a dare. He's like, no one else I've given this to will carry it or use it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but he was basically like, do it. So I'm going to do it. Um, in the hopes that I, well, not in the hopes of, I will never pull it out over concrete. Uh, that is something I won't do. Uh, I will only, I will never, I will not let anyone else touch it or think of it or even look at it. Um, 
but I am going to carry this thing. So M390, this is number 147. Presumably that's the number um, of the production. But let's let's take a, a quick look at this. So this blade, you might not realize uh, from what you're seeing, but this is a very thinly, there we go, you can see it now, very thin hollow grind, very thin, and it's a good portion of that pretty wide blade. Now, if you notice a... a a blinding shine across the edge of this blade. That is because Jared Neve put one of his exquisite edges, mirror polished edges on this knife, taking a very thin behind the edge, hollow ground uh, masterpiece of a blade and just finishing it. Um, I mean, really with it, that is the ultimate cherry on top. This thing is just, um, you know, it's crazy. It's really, really crazy. Hang on. Um, all right, I, I will at some point show how crazy sharp this is, uh, but I'll do that in my close-up video. I'll have a paper prepared, but uh, I've been cutting waves through it, through paper like it's nothing. I mean, it, this thing is just really something else. And and I, I do recall when I first saw this, I said, oh, that's cool, but it looks a lot like a Strider. And now that I've had a chance to break it down and look at it, it it's vaguely Strider-esque. I will give it like that. That's about the most I can say about about it. I, I was pretty strident when I first saw it. Like that's a Strider ripoff. I, I may have said something like that, but uh, I was I was mistaken. I really was. When you look at them side by side, uh, you know it's about as much of a ripoff as any other knife with a blade. You know it um, and a lot lozenge shaped opening hole. I mean that's that was really what it was. Um, superb ergonomics on this knife so uh in this grip and then you can come up into that choil and engage this really luscious large jimping i love large jimping of this sort you've got a gear uh backspacer or just jimped and proud backspacer and you have this beautiful marbled carbon fiber scale on the on the top that is uh not only linerless but there is weight reduction. There is uh, there are weight reduction pockets milled in there, which is just crazy because carbon fiber is you know it's already pretty light. But no, they took it the extra step. And then they also uh, milled out spaces uh, or milled out pockets in the lock side, making the titanium, which is already a light metal, even lighter. Uh, action on this is disgustingly smooth just ridiculously smooth um it feels nice and light feels luxurious and just smooth this this has a feel that is a kind of a cross between drop shutty captured bearings and um the oiled glassy feeling of like a sabenza uh it drops unlike a sabenza but it has a feel i don't know it, it has a really nice feel to it um if you can get one, I highly, if you have the means, I highly recommend you acquire one. Uh, this, this is one that would be a prize. This would, this is a prized knife. I mean, this would be, uh, would have a, a, a place of, of prominence in my collection. I really love it. I'm going to stop going off on it, uh, for now, and I'm going to post a close up video, but let's look at the lock side real quick. Um, I got to get some confirmation as to what this is. Is that Mokutai on this really cool, beautiful clip? Is that Mokutai on this somewhat large but very comfortable clip? And and what about that bark texture? Look at the bark texturing on this contoured clip side or a contoured, yeah, clip side of lock side of this handle. God, it is just beautiful. <sighs> All right. Well, okay, so that's... This is a this is a knife that fills me with uh, different feelings like like, wow, this is one that, that this is definitely one worth pursuing. Now, am I going to pursue it? Probably not. I'm not uh, I'm not in right now. I'm not up for a the, the chase or b the expense. But man, uh, I really, really, really like this knife. And if there is anyone out there listening who has one who who wants to sell it to me for a screaming deal. <laughs> do let me know all right i love this thing okay thanks i'm gonna put this away and uh try not to look at it okay 
So I was talking about summer weight folders. That's what I want to talk about here uh, because, well, summer's back. I'm coming home from work. I'm going over to the community pool. Uh, sometimes my my wife and daughters are all already over there, and I got to throw a knife in the bathing suit. I am not going knifeless, but also it's got to be something I don't care if I accidentally jump in, which has happened uh, in the past. Uh, I can't care about that and and also can't be too scary because I am a lot around a lot of kids and, you know, uh, sheeple type over there. And <clears throat> lightweight materials all summer long. My favorite shorts, I uh, hope this isn't too much information, but my favorite shorts are like light. You know, they're, they're made by Quicksilver, like I'm a surfer. They're really light, and uh, I don't need a big heavy knife deforming the pockets and pulling, it, pulling those uh, nice um, lightweight uh, shorts down. So this is this is what I like to carry. Now, all of that is to say that I don't care uh, about carrying a seven ounce knife. Like I don't mind as long as it's a sweet knife. So what I consider light, you might not consider light, but some of these are 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 incontrovertibly light. So well, that's not the right word. But anyway, I'm going to show I'm going to actually use a scale. I'm not a scale guy often. But since uh, I don't really know what these weigh, I figured I could, uh, for accuracy, uh, have a scale. Okay, as you can see, it is zeroed out. All right, the first one is the TRM Atom. You may have known, uh, sorry, my left hand is just terrible at opening knives tonight. Uh, you may have known that I was going to say this because I love this knife. And um, it really is, truly is a light light but capable carry you've got a 3.6 inch blade of 20 cv steel this is uh, uh coated um diamond like coating and um a really thin edge i mean it's just a cutting machine but also has a great point no one ever talks about that but it has a great great point and then the handle is nice and slim nice and light and i guess um you know this is that dl hansen and sons micarta or g carta and uh, that's a pretty light material. I know some people have uh, titanium scales on theirs. It's going to make that heavier. But for your standard G10 or micarta scales, the TRM Atom comes in at two ounces, two and three quarter ounces. That's pretty awesome. Two and three quarter ounces. Um, so very light and very capable. Uh, so yeah, I love this TRM Atom. I'll put that over there for now. Uh, here's one that actually I took to the pool. I've been talking about this knife a lot since uh, since I made this trade for it. And uh, here it is. It's the CJRB Scoria. And and what gave me pause for a moment is that Nick Shabazz just did a, uh, a, a scorching video on the Scoria, a, a really critical. He's not a not a fan, not a fan. And he had the um, this version of it with the maroon micarta and the ar rpm 9 steel um but his was very different his felt cloth like kind of like the the uh, g carta does and uh felt unfinished on the edges and just totally different production uh and a different feel than this one this one has micarta but it's very smooth smoothed out micarta it doesn't feel like now i was not the first owner of this but I know what he's talking about. I know that feel for my Carta, and this does not feel like it ever had that. Anyway, this one is very light, coming in at, let's see, three and three-eighths ounces. Do you think that's light? I do. I mean, this this was in my bathing suit pocket, and I nearly jumped in the water because I forgot about it. <clears throat> but this knife the other day, uh, I may have mentioned on last week's show that, uh, you know, my wife, who's more outgoing in a lot of ways, uh, uh, met some people at the pool while I was home, actually probably doing this podcast. And um, she texted me, oh, I met a knife guy. And I was like, great. So this guy, he's really nice. He lives in my neighborhood um, and he has a love of knives, but not modern folders. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't zeroed in on what he likes, but he needed a knife. And he's like, I know I can come to you now. Can I borrow a knife? And I was like, what? Why don't you have one? Uh, you know, just give, give him a little ribbing. And he's like, oh, I know, I know. And he borrowed this and he loved it. He loved it. He's like, it's so thin and sharp. And, uh, you know, he he uh, used it for fruit. And I was watching, 
you know, kind of out of the corner of my eye. He wasn't at my table. I was like, oh, man, he's getting so much fruit juice and stuff up into that uh, pivot. This thing's going to be all gummed up. It'll be a good excuse for me to take it apart and clean it up. But um, I didn't have to. He he took great care of it, returned it to me. And when he did here, he, he, he had it on a napkin and he went like this. He had it half half open, kind of like this. And he was like, here you go. He's a man from another culture. So the way he handed the knife back to me felt very, I don't know. He had a real respect for it and wanted to show me. And I appreciated that. This knife is, uh, I, I've been loving this thing. This is one of my go-to pajama knives. This is one of my go-to uh, like workout. Uh, I have a little thing that I've been doing outside uh, on hot days. And I have very uh, light shorts. This goes in there perfectly. Plus, I like how my car to get stained <laughs> when you sweat into it. I know. I know. <clears throat> but at least I admit it, right? Um, and this, okay, so this has done all of that. This has been a great uh, user for me so far. I haven't had it that long. Um, Chris McNair and I made a trade. And, uh, he got my riffle. And I've honestly, I wanted the riffle for so long and really loved that knife. But I've used this so much more. I, I must admit, though, I like the riffle a lot and dig the design. This design is just kind of more up my alley. And I thought it was funny because Nick Shabazz said, thought the design was totally, totally eh. Just meh. Like, it's just a knife. But to me, I think it's a, I think it's a beautiful design. Am I blind? I know I'm not. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's a really... I, I remember when it came out, I thought it was kind of a special knife in a in a in a field of kind of unspecial but very well made knives i thought that cjrb scoria like fit the bill all right something that's new uh that i got from the company vostied knives i love this thing so uh you may remember i had the vostied morgan their eight inch chef's knife that they sent me that i gave a very positive review because it was uh, an awesome knife and still is it's kind of become our favorite in the kitchen very very sharp it's a nine nine cr uh i believe it's a nine cr mov and it's a nine cr what is it uh san mai sorry I, it's clad with a softer steel anyway it's a great 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 knife i did a very positive review they loved the review and then uh when they said that i said well how, how about you uh, send me the bellamy i'd love to check that out right just said send me a folding knife and they sent me the bellamy and this thing this is a great knife for many reasons. Let's talk about, let's talk about, we'll talk about the obvious second. The obvious is that it's beautiful to look at and works as well as it looks. But um, the, uh, the thing about this knife is that it, that's a carbon fiber handle handle. It's like an end cut carbon fiber handle. That's got a great feel that uh, beautiful and hollow ground clip point blade is m390 blade steel we all know that as a premium blade steel and this whole knife is 130 bucks it is crazy this thing has uh so so in in terms of the deal it is a deal this is well worth that money uh just on the materials and build alone but then you look at the design and it's stunning i mean i think it's a beautiful knife now i am partial to clip points i do love a good clip point and this is a beautifully designed clip point something i've been liking a lot recently you saw this with the the preta 2 is that uh the fuller and then how it intersects with the swedge um that's just a looks thing i really i really like it but i really like the fuller because it allows a oh i'm just going to use my right hand it allows a right a, a middle finger flick spidey flick so to speak uh very easy with that fuller uh, this one also has other deployment methods this has a regular flipper and i love the flipper itself it's so low profile um but it works great and that works great the middle finger flick and then it has a front flipper which is to me the one that were, works least great. Uh, it it is fine, and and as this knife has broken in, it's gotten better. Um, can't do it with my left so well, but it's just like it kind of seems like if you're going to have 
three ways of opening it or more, you're going to have detent issues. And what I mean by that is you cannot tune the detent to be perfect for all three of those different, very different methods of opening. And the one that suffered in this case, in my opinion, and, and I haven't heard this from others, is the front flipper. Now, I, I think of the front flipper, which is very nicely jimped, which is kind of a, a prerequisite uh, for a good front flipper. But to me, if, if it <coughs> extended a little bit further out, instead of uh, being rounded right here, if it kind of came out a little bit straighter right here and gave you something to grab onto and then lever back. As it is, it kind of forces you to follow that handle around and it just doesn't feel as comfortable to me as the other methods of deployment. But that's just opening and closing, which is, by the way, drop shut and super smooth. Uh, no, no play. I mean, it goes without saying no play on all of these. I never mentioned it, but it seems like I haven't had a knife with play since the last Benchmade I got. But um, uh, this is just really, really, really nice and light. Let's see how much this thing weighs. All right. Two and seven eighths ounces. So almost three ounces. That's light. That's light. That's light, people. And and the way this thing feels, uh, I've mentioned this before, uh, this end cut, I think it's called, end cut carbon fiber, feels a little bit like charcoal, like drawing charcoal, uh, without without dust, without leaving the powder or dust. I just, I love the way this thing, I, I, I just really like this knife all around. And I think the handle uh, looks a little bit like the big lighter. All right, I'm going to put this down here and move on okay the next one's a bit um uh hard to get i don't know if it's even gettable at this point um but i got this from levan uh from levan from russia with levan that's uh levan of the knife nuts podcast that's his import country uh company and he's just been bringing in these super cool russian designed and russian made knives uh, over the past couple of years and this one, this was last summer he had this. I remember clearly it was a Saturday morning. It's that that's the one day of the week I get to sleep in. And uh, I remember it was a Saturday morning and I was laying in bed and I woke up and I just was like, I never do this, but I was like, I better check and see if there's like something I'm missing out on knife wise. And I went on to uh, Instagram and there he was. He had this uh, advertised and I absolutely loved it. i fell in love with that giant fuller in the blade someone has told me and now i need to do the research find this again uh and if you can think of it uh, please leave it in the comments below but someone uh, mentioned once that this is that blade is a modern day interpretation of of some sort of traditional russian blade type with this big uh, scooped out section here now, what that big scooped out section essentially does is it it removes resistance when you're cutting through materials because a it's it's got a sort of micro knurled or 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 blasted texture and um, and dips way in. So the material is not going to be touching that when you're cutting through. It's going to touch this very, very thin surface and edge and then skip that and then come back over this. Uh, fully flat ground portion at the top. So this thing is a, an outstanding cutter, super sharp, and then uh, jimped in all the right places. Like the, the the milling that comes down the handle in a sort of stripe is micro milled north to south. And it really, it's like, like little areas of jimping that works so great to hold this slender knife in hand. I mean, this is slender and titanium and could potentially... Uh, be a nightmare to hold on to, but all of the micro milling jimping around it is just, man, it's awesome. The jimping up here on the thumb ramp is a bit ceremonial and doesn't really do the trick, but uh, another great knife with multiple opening options. You can spidey flick it, thumb flick it, or uh, use the use the old flipper. Uh, just a great full titanium light knife. Let's see what this is. This weighs three and one quarter ounces. Three and one quarter ounces is the uh, Ivan Braganitz designed uh, 
what the hell is this? <laughs> Sorry, a Crystal Aurora. I get it mixed up with his other design that I own. All right, putting that down here. Plus, it's a full-size knife. Not all of these, like the next one, which is nice and light. But it's not full size, and it requires and it needs its size to remain light. Okay, next is the rock wall from our good friends over there at Tactile Knife Company. This made 100% in Texas, 100% by the Tactile Knife Company, except for their stop pins. At least that was the case when this one was made. This is a prototype uh, or a review sample once the proto once the prototype was settled on. Um, uh, they have only gotten better from here, but what I have is a nice and light full titanium, beautifully milled all over a detail oriented, um, titanium liner lock. And a lot of us have been talking about how awesome titanium liner locks are. I mean, we've all done, we've all paid our adequate, um, you know, uh, respect. We've made our sacrifices to the gods of the of the frame lock but the titanium um liner lock should not be forgotten and i think a lot of companies are starting to make them again because they just uh, not again like they went away but um it's just so nice not to deal with uh your the pressure you exert on the lock bar when opening a flipper um with a frame lock i just i've just been digging these lately like my monterey bay knives turbo all right if you look in here you'll see uh milled out pockets this one again to be light is relying on its size though um there are a few extra parts i think in this knife compared to other knives of course they came from the pen uh making game to make knives and so you know they were approaching it with a less traditional uh, a knife making approach. All right. Uh, love this knife. Very sharp. Love that long tip and swedge. Uh, great. It fits in the, it was designed to fit in the footprint of a Wrigley's Spearmint uh, five strip gum pack. Um, maybe some of you don't know what that is, <laughs> but uh, double your pleasure, double your fun. Um, so, how much does this tactile rock wall named after Rockwall County, like all of the um, tactile knives are named after counties and it's not Bexer. It's bear. I found that out the hard way. This thing is two and a half ounces, two and a half ounces. It's nothing. It's, it's very little, uh, in terms of weight, uh, but a nice size and packs a punch in terms of cutting. That's a three inch blade, by the way. Wait, is that three or three and a quarter? It's about three and a quarter. Okay. Next up a, a, uh, Kind of an instant classic. Um, now it's being made in in different uh, exclusives and different steels and such. Uh, but this is the Demco eighty twenty point five, and uh, I got this last summer. I got this last August. I remember it came in right before my birthday. This is this was the pocket knife I was carrying on my fiftieth birthday. I remember. Uh, I remember sharpening tiki torch bottoms with this. I say I remember because uh, that 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 day I drank and I, I hadn't uh, had anything to drink for a, a long time before that. And you know, uh, <laughs> well, I remember much of it. Um, but this knife played heavily in the day because it cut a lot of stuff. It was new, and I was in my honeymoon period with it, and still like trying, trying like mad to love the shape of that knife. Um, and I did, I did really love how it cut. I did do really love how it cuts and how it works. I just kind of wish it was better looking, <laughs> but, uh, you know, sheep's foot have never been my thing. So why should I think a shark's foot would be my thing? Um, but I did buy this one in particular. Um, uh, I, uh, John from Demco knives sent this to me. Um, and you know, just to add, I, I don't know, this was when they were hard to find. And so he, you know, I paid standard for it, but he, um, they were hard to find and he had both blade shapes to offer. So I went for this because it's, it's different and I have the 80, 20 already. I had that and that is, uh, a clip point. So, uh, how much is this? So this is just grivery, uh, on a frame. Now the frame is, is, uh, lined with steel and, and the, you know, the, the, this stuff up here, maybe this isn't such a light knife, but it it feels light. It carries light. 
Let's see. Three and five eighths. So yeah, still pretty light in my book. That's my book. Uh, but yeah, so three and five eighths, uh, pretty light knife. Um, what do you think is light? Like for instance, here's my Mekong Delta combat folder, which I carried today. Uh, feels substantially more than all these, uh, even though it's uh, all of that full titanium is very, very uh, uh, thoroughly pocketed out for to make it lighter. How much does this thing? Only six ounces, six, six total, like exactly six ounces. Uh, it feels more, or maybe it feels less. I don't know. But to me, it's not, it's nothing carrying this. Actually, it's nothing carrying this, even in a pair of khaki shorts. Uh, they have a little bit more structural integrity around the pocket, and this does not. So, so lightness is relative. Okay. Oh, since we're measuring weighing things, let's see what this Evo uh, weighs with the, with the carbon fiber. Now I'm on a weighing kick. Four and a quarter. Okay. So yeah. All right. All right. So we're we're in a good, we're in good territory here. Next up is a full size uh but but light and small uh in most directions knife. This is the Cimarron by Finch Knives. Talk about this one a lot. I really like it. It's understated but very classy. I like the way the blade fits completely in the handle. And uh, it's got that nice sculpted titanium pocket clip, a really beautiful dual color theme um, going on here. And there are four different models of this. You can get red and black, Kelly green and blue, uh, this, uh, and then olive drab and safety orange. And when designing these, Stephen, uh, Stephen and Spencer from Finch Knives were thinking about uh, their outdoor gear and some of the really nice color combinations on their jackets and on their cold weather gear and on their sleeping bags and stuff. And that's how they came up with these really nice color combos. Uh, this one, like I mentioned, is full size because it's one, two, three and a half inches in blade length. Very nice uh, blade, by the way. This is a 154 cm, like most of their knives. Steel, I love. Easy to maintain, stays sharp reasonably long, Get takes a razor sharp edge. Um, yeah, love this knife. Um, this is one of those, uh, this is a large length knife at three and a half uh, inch blade, uh, but it's so slender that this rides in the back pocket very well. This rides next to the wallet well, or I don't carry this in my back right. I carry this sometimes in my back left, my bandana pocket basically, and it just hangs out over by the, by the edge and I can sit and I don't feel it. And, uh, but it's a great knife, and you've got a, a, a nice, capable blade there uh, at the ready. Now, this knife was designed to be light. It was designed for backpacking. That's what uh, Stephen and Spencer of the Finch Knife Company love to do, fishing, uh, outdoorsy stuff. And uh, so this was, this was designed specifically for backpacking. Let's see what it weighs in at. Three, right on the money. Three. So this is exactly half the weight of this. All right, so three ounces. That's not bad for a three and a half inch. You know, you hear uh, ratios. I've heard um, an ounce per inch of blade length is a good thing to go by. Uh, maybe um, depends on the on the knife type, but that those are those are stipulations that people put. I think that may have been Nick Shabazz uh, put that on there that he noticed that if it's an ounce per blade uh, per inch of blade. It's going to be a nicely weighted knife. I don't know. Okay, uh, next up, this one I've been really digging. I got this uh, as soon as I saw it. Uh, something about the design just spoke to me, and I've wanted to check out a Sen Cut knife uh, for a while. So this is the Bronte. You saw when I got this, I was showing it off a little bit. I, I just love the look of this thing. I love the totally neutral handle you got a parallel you got a line on top you got a, another line on the bottom that's parallel and that's your handle and then you have a blade that sort of um uh continues the top line from the uh spine of the handle into the spine of the blade and then you get that beautiful downward cutting angle and that very acute and pointy tip uh, that nestles in there nice and light this one was one that actually i had to break in considerably uh, this was stiff as a board when I got it from Sencut. Um, now it's starting to, you know, now I can shake it in 
it doesn't just drop on its own. Um, but you know, that's from some knives, that's something we've come to expect. Maybe even has become a hallmark of quality. Like if it's not there, there's something wrong with the knife. And initially that's kind of the attitude I took. Like I'm I'm used to the immediate uh, you know, high performance. And when this one didn't have it and it took a minute to break in, I thought, oh, I bought a lemon and it's too cheap for me to return. <laughs> I'll just live with it. So I just kept, uh, you know, opening and closing it. And and this blade, though, it's like very heavily stonewashed. It almost feels a little blasted. I, It's not the smoothest surface. So I, I imagine the ball bearings are, are creating a race uh, around the pivot on the blade and it will be ever smoother. You know, it will just keep getting smoother. This is another knife that makes great use of a fuller. I love a fuller on a folding knife now. Um, so great way to open that knife. Also, it's got the front flipper. This front flipper works great. It feels really intuitive and natural to me, and I can do it with that, you know, hiding your knife. Oh, I don't have a knife. And then there you go. It just kind of shoots out. You use your forefinger. Um, the one thing I almost did here that I have done on my hand when I've done that uh, that technique, that opening it up with your with your uh, forefinger pretending you don't have a knife in your hand is that sometimes it backfires and I actually stab myself in the palm. And this one uh, I have done that with. It is a very acute. It's a it's a flat ground knife, but it's very thin and very thin behind the edge. And then uh, it's got this extremely uh, acute tip. So it's it easily penetrates the fatty flesh of my palm if I if I make a mistake. <clears throat> All right, uh, penultimate knife in this is is one of the classiest. Uh, this is made by hand uh, by a gentleman who's been on this show. And, uh, well, he goes by the name of American Blade Works. I love this knife. This is the Model 1, and this is the Mark V. He, he went all the way up to six uh, sort of iterations and reiterations of this design. And then, um, and this was the second to last um, so now he's been he's been making the version six for over a year. Uh, I had a chance to see them last year at Blade Show when version six first became a thing. And um, and then this year, the titanium frame lock version six is man. Beautiful work. Michael Miller of uh, of American Blade Works. He does great, great stuff. And I just love his spirit of constant improvement. That's why he went through six iterations of this design to arrive at the at the sixth now i had a chance to sample number three uh, i have number five i had like number two and number four i don't know i i got a chance he sent me a number of them one of them was an aluminum they were all awesome uh in different ways but i see where he was going with the improvements and mine is one that i've rebonded with recently and have been carrying quite a bit and and quite a bit for me, you know, I have such a rotation of knives. Uh, if I pull something out of obscurity, uh, Michael Martin, I'm sorry, I called him Michael Miller. Uh, it's Michael Martin of American Blade Works. Um, <clears throat> so uh, with oh, with this knife, it, it, uh, it took me a minute, like I said, uh, to, to fall back in love with it. I, when I first got it, I loved it. And then it went by the wayside because I had so many other knives coming through. And I thought, oh, this action should be smoother and I'm going to break it in. And I never did. And then now that's what I've been doing. And it's gotten to such a point like I was talking to to uh, Michael at Blade this year. And he was like, yeah, they they used to have to break in. And and he seems to have solved uh, the break in problem. And, and I told him, I don't mind breaking in knives. I actually don't. Uh, I I sort of inured myself to it with the Emerson's. They all have required a break in and they all require you to weather this sort of adolescence um and then they all blossom into beautiful knives hopefully that's how it works with kids i don't know i'm still working on mine uh, but he said he wanted that uh, uh, uh michael said that he wanted to um get rid of that break-in period with this and i think he's achieved that on the version six all right the scale has turned off let's turn that sucker back on and let's see what this weighs i have a feeling this one is more of a perceived lightweight uh, but let's see nope three and a half ounces 
man, this guy, this guy killed it with this knife. You should check out American Blade Works. Um, again, here, there's his logo. Again, the branding just on the, on the, uh, what do you call it? The pivot. And I love that. I think that's a really cool move. Yeah, check out American Blade Works. Check out the uh, the Model uh, 1 version 6 that he has for sale now. Um, it's a more expensive when you get the full titanium, obviously, but he's got uh, G10 and Micarta that'll knock your socks off. And they're reasonably priced for knives that are made in this guy's garage. He's not, he's not, he didn't come up with the design and, and have anyone else. But he's been building these things at his home and they're awesome. And he's had the responsiveness uh, to change the design to what people want and require uh, that a that a large company just hasn't, you know, is not able to accommodate. All right. The last one, uh, hopefully uh, you haven't guessed it, but it's an easy one to guess. Um, and I know there are other knives, but it is the bug out, the Benchmade bug out. Uh, and you heard me crack wise about Benchmade before. I have mixed feelings about Benchmade. They mostly just bore me. And that sounds very... Uh, I don't know, snobby or whatever it is, but they they just, but they have individual designs that I just think are awesome. And I forget about them when I'm talking about Benchmade in general, but uh, um, this knife has always been just an amazing knife. Uh, I got the original one with the blue and with the blue handle. And this is the S 30 V. I think they might be doing 20 CV now. Uh, S 30 V. I got rid of the blue handle in, um, deference to this uh who did this this is a uh canvas micarta handle scale set that i got oh alan putnam these are alan putnam scales i got them through um blade hq back when when this when the bug out was blue and it was very hard to get any other alternative you know that that whole uh cottage market around making scales for this knife had not popped up yet and this is some of the early earliest stuff i could get and this has been perfect. And then I put one of the um, Snaggletooth MFs on this um, because for a while this was my uh, inside the winter coat pocket and I wanted it to be able to deploy if I needed to whip it out for whatever reason. And I've just left it on there. I like it. This thing is so super light. Like the Cimarron, it was developed for backpacking and it's got that name Bug Out uh, and Really, when you're backpacking, like I said before, you need to watch every ounce. Um, all that stuff adds up, you know. And if I were backpacking, it'd be like, well, I'm taking 12 knives, so uh, I'll, we'll have to sacrifice water. What do I? I'm not gonna care. There'll be water when I get there. Look, there's streams. Like I'm not gonna carry all that weight, but I better bring these 12 knives. Uh, any case, uh, they they designed this knife for people who are counting their ounces. And man, they did an awesome job. Now, understand these are not the original uh, FRN scales that were very cheap and light feeling. And I have added on that Snaggletooth MF. So this won't be the exact weight of what this knife was when I first got it. But this knife now has so many iterations, I can't imagine that they all share the same weight because uh, a lot of them have different milling and titanium and this and that. All right, so let's wave this, weigh this semi-standard bug out. Look at that. Can you see that? One and three quarter ounces. One and three quarter ounces. This is still why this knife, even though um, I have a lot of other knives that are a lot cooler with a lot better blade steel and action and this and that and that and that, that's why this knife still gets man it gets a lot of use this time of year it's just thrown in the pocket and taken oftentimes the back pocket because i'll use this as a secondary that's another reason uh why i have that snaggletooth mf all right let's take a look at what i got here i got the trm adam got the cjrb scoria the bellamy by vosteed i've got the uh the um aurora the Rockwall, the 8020.5. I got the Cimarron from Finch Knife Company, the Sencut Bronte, the American Blade Works Model 1 version 5, and of course the Benchmade Bug Out. Uh, this list would be incomplete without that. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, checking out my summer weight folding uh, favorites. We'll see if I get any others this, uh, this summer. Um, but until uh, until that happens, this is the list. Be sure to check in with us on Sunday for a great interview show. And, of course, tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives, 
live right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Switch, Twitch. And then, of course, you can also download uh, and listen to us right here on all these podcast apps. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.